Hey everyone, it's Trencrave here, and in today's video, we're going to be going through the top five dumbest school rules and the dumbest things that are banned in school. So, you know, just really stupid stuff. But before you get into this video, I really appreciate if you guys could leave a like in the video. That would be awesome. And also make sure to comment down below and tell me what the dumbest thing that's banned in your school is, or at least the dumbest school rule. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel because that really helps out. But let's go ahead and get in this top five. And in the number five spot, this one is just downright stupid. And this little girl, she's blind and she carries around one of those little canes so she can figure out where she's going and, you know, not run into things. Y you know what those are. And this is just an innocent little girl. Couldn't hurt a fly whatsoever. But what the school did was they banned her from bringing her cane to school so she had to walk around without it because apparently this cane was a safety issue. We went, I picked Lily Grace up from school on Thursday afternoon, um, greeted her in the playground and her teacher was there waiting for me. And um, she said to me, I'm really sorry, Christy, but um, Lily Grace, she handed me Lily Grace's cane, I should add. Uh, and she said to me, I'm really sorry, Christy, but um, Lily Grace is no longer allowed to bring this cane into school. Um, she was really apologetic about it, I will add. Um, I was like, oh, quite shocked. Okay, why? Um, and she said, um, uh, Gary, her mobility officer, had come in and said it was a risk of health and safety. So I asked to whom? Um, and she then said, the other children. So I came home. Um, rang the school and spoke to our head and to, just to ascertain where this had come from. Um, she confirmed that Gary had considered it a health and safety risk and she could no longer bring it into school. To which point, obviously, I was completely incensed and flabbergasted, appalled and all, all, of, all of the above to, to why a vital mobility tool would be, um, one, considered a risk and two, taken away from a child that clearly needs it. Moving on to number four, I kind of understand this rule, but I kind of don't at the same time, or at least I guess the better way to say it is that it wasn't handled properly for sure. And this girl, she brought a butter knife to school, obviously another little innocent chick. She, she, she's not going to hurt anybody, okay? But she brought a butter knife to school so that she could cut her pear. And uh, what happened was she ended up getting suspended because she did this. And this butter knife, obviously not sharp or anything like that. It's a, it's a butter knife. But apparently the butter knife fell under the policy of bringing knives to school. And I understand that, okay? I can tell you that one makes sense for sure. Because if you're bringing like a bladed knife, yeah, that's not exactly a great thing. But in my opinion, I just thought this one was handled terribly because what should have happened in this situation was the guy should have told her, you know, hey, don't bring this ever again, and it should have been done with right there. This is where the 13-year-old girl brings the butter knife to school to cut the pear, and the principal sees it, and he suspends her for that. Now, I get zero tolerance policy, and I get what's in the handbook and whatever, and as I'm looking at the video, I'm thinking to myself, really, it's the mother who ought to be suspended for sending the kid into school with one of those Bosque pears. I hate those things. They're hard as hell, and they're tough to get through, and you can see her laboring. A Bartlett pear would have been fine, and we would have avoided all this. With that being said, here's the key on this one, and I go case by case on these suspensions. If what the girl or the outlaw in this case says happened when she met the principal, if that's what really happened, then this is the problem with principals today. Here's the girl, the outlaw's story, and her mom's story. As you're walking to his office, I asked him, and he said, you were not allowed to have knives in school, but I, and I said, I was using it to cut my pair. I wasn't harming any other student. And he said, I know, but it's the policy. It's a butter knife. She has braces. She was cutting her pair. There was no intent at all there. Heading over to number three, we've got a student who has a truck. And this guy, he likes to have American flags on the back of his truck, so he, you know, drives around with them on there. And it's obviously not an issue whatsoever, but apparently one of the officers or some parking person came out and told him, you know, you, you got to get rid of this. And the reason that they gave him was just absolutely stupid. When you hear it, you're going to laugh your ass off. I'm telling you right now. But after a little while and this guy fought a little bit, uh, the school ended up going back on their little ban on this because it was obviously stupid and they got a ton of hate for it. Right, Teresa. And he was surprised. One of the first things you notice on campus here is a flagpole right up front and Old Glory on top, but this high school junior says he was told yesterday his mobile flags might make others uncomfortable. For Jeremy Stoppel, this one truck parade's been a long time coming. Now that I finally get to drive to school, I have a truck, that's what I want to do. I want to fly my flags. He added the three by five foot symbols last weekend for several reasons. September 11th is coming up, so I wanted to fly them in honor of that. My cousin is actually in the Navy. But Thursday, he says here, as he arrived at school, a campus security supervisor got on him, first for squealing his tires, then for the flags. She said I should take my flags down. She said that this is a school that focuses around diversity, and she doesn't want anyone to feel uncomfortable by me flying these flags. How do you suppose anyone would feel uncomfortable in America with an American flag? That's where 
that's where I'm confused. Moving on to number two, I kind of threw this one in here just for shits and giggles because I thought it'd be funny. But if you haven't heard of fidget spinners, you've been living under a rock. And fidget spinners have been blowing up lately. Uh, they're the little things that you spin uh, fidget with. I, I don't know how to explain it. You all know what it is. But they were originally for ADHD kids. And now everybody's using them because they've gone mainstream. And uh, basically, they've gotten to the point in schools where they're a distraction because kids are focusing on that instead of the schoolwork and stuff like that. And they make noise. And now they're getting banned in a lot of schools in the U.S. And I, I just think it's funny. I don't know. Here it is. They're taking over campuses everywhere. It's a fidget toy. They're called fidget spinners. Spin them, trade them, or show off your tricks. People try to balance it with one finger, but I can't do it. But like most new crazes, they are quickly becoming a headache for teachers. The phones are bad enough. This would just be one more item that would distract children from learning. Now the spinners have been banned from several CCSD schools. But for everyone else, leave them at home. The district says any item that's considered a disruption faces the risk of being taken away. Oh, this, yeah, this, I, I'm not uh, too sure about this <laughs> toy. <laughs> Annalise Ortiz, 13 Action News. And CCSD wants to remind you that toys like this, the fidget spinner, or any item that's considered a classroom disruption can be taken away from a student. If a parent is upset that their child's toy has been taken away from them, then they should contact the school and make an appointment to meet with the appropriate administrator. And finally, the number one spot, this one is hands down easily the dumbest rule or like thing banned from schools in this list. Basically, a new principal stepped in or something like that, and the parents are now no longer allowed to walk their kids to school or to walk them out of school. They have to either have the kids go themselves or they have to go through the car lane and wait like an hour through that entire thing because it's a mess, and you guys know that. I mean, who, who likes sitting through those pieces of shits? But here's the real kicker of the whole situation because it's kind of stupid in the first place, but parents who are still doing this and taking their kids to school and walking them and that kind of stuff and not following this new guideline are getting threatened with being arrested. That's how far they're taking this. Bear Branch Elementary School is losing students over this pickup policy. It's forcing all students to either take the bus or all parents to sit in a long car pickup line that takes at least an hour out of their day. Parents who try to walk their children out of school face possibility of criminal charges. If you think I'm exaggerating, I am not. She's starting to arrest people. Wendy Jarman is a private school teacher who just pulled her kids out of public school, Bear Branch Elementary in Magnolia ISD. She lives in the neighborhood behind the school. Her kids were walkers and she used to escort them, but they can't do that anymore. The school's principal, Holly Ray, won't allow it. Ray has gotten Montgomery County constables to be her enforcers. This has happened to many parents. They have been cited. They have been threatened if they step one foot on school property that they will be arrested and charged with who knows what. Frank Young has one of those warnings. He also lives close to the school and he also pulled his children out of it. He says no effort to negotiate a better policy or even hundreds of signatures on a petition got the district to change the policy or the bully tactics. And Mrs. Ray's policy is implying that a parent doesn't have the ability or capability to decide what is safest for their children and that the school district does, and I disagree. The school district responded to a request for a comment with a statement fully supporting Principal Ray saying the goal is a safe dismissal process. But the parents who have been coming to the school for years say there was nothing unsafe about the old pickup and drop off procedures. This is about a principal overstepping boundaries. But other parents have approached me saying that the principal's my way or else policy goes much deeper than the dismissal process. Yes, students are being pulled out by their parents, but they say teachers and staff are leaving the school too. Those are the clips that I have for today's video. I hope that you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like in the video. If we can break 10,000 likes, that would be insanely awesome. I really appreciate that. Also, make sure to comment down below and tell me which one of these school rules or things banned from schools was the dumbest one in your opinion. And let me know the most stupid thing that's been banned from your school. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel because that really helps out. And if you want to see another video kind of similar to this one, make sure to go and check out a video that I posted a little while ago. It was the top five dumbest reasons that kids got detention. So stupid reasons they got detention. I'll leave a link to that video down in the description and also an annotation on the outro screen if you want to go check that out. But that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Chabang, bitches. Uh -huh.